tonight, a loophole in consumer protection laws is leaving Coloradans vulnerable to thieves. Our consumer investigator Jacqueline Allen is digging into how the bad guys steal your money so that you know how to stop them. I was a producer for ABC News. A former journalist, Betsy Rich, can usually sniff out a story. I am a pretty suspicious person, so I was really surprised when I became the victim of this scam. The Evergreen resident got this text last month, alerting her to fraud on her Chase account. Had I authorized a $1,700 transfer, answer yes or no, and I answered no. Welcome to Chase. Immediately, her phone rang from the customer service number on the back of her debit card. The caller knew her account number, address, and balance, and said someone was actively transferring money out of her account. So I immediately picked up the other phone and called Chase fraud. It was a 20 minute wait. The caller asked her to change her pin or risk losing more money. Shortly after she did. So you lost more than $10,000 like that? In, in a second. A story all too familiar to Denver 7 investigates. We feel pretty embarrassed that we were scammed. Scammers spoof legitimate numbers, so it looks like they're calling from your bank. And he had me search in my own name. The imposters all gain your trust with information they've somehow accessed. Lawmakers have been fighting for more consumer protections. But right now, the 1978 Electronic Fund Transfer Act does not cover wire transfer fraud, a loophole scammers and banks are well aware of. When asked about Betsy's loss, a Chase Bank representative sent a statement saying in part, beware of new contacts asking you for codes, access to your device, or to send them or yourself money in order to prevent fraudulent activity. We are denying your claim because we determined that the items being disputed were authorized. No, they weren't. Or you received benefit from the item. You stole my money. Insulting. That's what Betsy calls Chase's response. While the bank did return $1,700, she's out 9000 And why the bank wouldn't flag large, out-of-character wire transfers is a question this former journalist would still like answered. There's a lot that could be done to protect consumers, and no one's doing it. And that's a shame. One sign of change under federal pressure People who were scammed out of money on Zelle started to get refunds last November. Consumer advocates hope that's just the start. I'm consumer investigative reporter Jacqueline Al.